Greetings everybody. Today I wanted to walk through how we can make some techno using just the drum brute impact. So, well, let's get started here. Firstly, we should probably decide well, what type of kick pattern we want. Do we want the standard four on the floor or do we want to shake it up a little bit? So I really think this is going to come down to our baseline preference. Um, and do we want to use just the decay or do we want to add in some low toms for the baseline? Let's, let's see the difference. So that's already pretty dirty. Um, let's see if we can shorten that and add in some low toms here. I think this is pretty good for our baseline, for our kick and baseline pattern. Oh yeah, you can add a, you can add the color kick to just make it disgusting. Okay, yeah, that's that's pretty sick. Um, next thing to add, let's add some hi hats. What we can actually do is enable polyrhythms and then we can do last step for the hi-hats to only have four here. So Alright, cool. So what I did there was I added an accent on this third sixteenth note here um, to sort of give it that syncopated feel to it. Um, so yeah, let's just hear that one more time. Just the hats. And the reason why I'm doing two steps and two accents here, um, or two normal steps, is to make room for the kick drum. Cool. All right, so to layer layer that up, we can add in an open hi-hat. Um, and let's see here. This one we could do a full 16th note pattern. So let's see here. Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, whenever we're only using these drum sounds for our techno track, um, it's going to be really important to use syncopated rhythms here um, and different different rhythms, right? Um, because we got to add some interesting tonal elements um, with our rhythms that we can't get from sound sources. So I think having these open hats here can serve a good purpose.
Yeah, this is groovy. Super groovy. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Let's add in... Let's add in some melody here. Melody, right? So... There's two um, lead type drum sounds that we can use. Firstly, the cowbell, which is absolutely one of the sickest, sickest drums in history. I love that. I love the sound. Um, and also, we've got the FM drum. Cool. So, um, what I'm going to do, um, let's see here, well, let's just listen to it and try and add these in, uh, randomly pretty much. See, we see how we feel about them. Okay, okay, so I've got an idea. Why don't we extend the cowbell pattern and we can just, yeah, put one on the sixth and 14th, 16th notes of all of these, but on the last one, um, why don't we change up the rhythm a little bit? If you hold down a one of these 16th notes, um, you can actually change the, um, well, it's, it ratchets the notes, right? So you can double it, triple it, quadruple it. So let's see. What if we do like a three, two, one, right? Yeah, let's see how this sounds. Okay, okay, I don't know if I like that too much. So um, I'm just gonna let this run and change these up as I feel. Yeah, yeah, all right, so that's already sounding super sick. Um, let's hear it with, let's do just the cowbell and the hats. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a super cool melody. All right, so. Right, so. The next melodic element that we're going to add is the FM drum. So, let's see here. Hmm. Maybe... Maybe we can do just a three-step pattern. Let's see how this sounds. No, no, that's that's already too busy. Hmm.
actually. I think that's pretty good. So, let's do some hats. Super funky. Next thing we're gonna add is a little clap here. So. Beautiful, beautiful. I have that little bit of shuffle there um, to make it super groovy. So next thing we can add, let's add some symbols here. And yeah. I usually like to add symbols on each quarter note um, just because whenever you add in the distortion and compression, um, it really makes like a good white noise on top. So let's check this out. Okay, so um, I'm not, not a fan of that. So why don't we try something else here? Actually, that sounds pretty good. I think it's because, yeah, yeah, these aren't accented, which, well, I guess it doesn't. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but we go back to this. Hmm. Or maybe it was just because the quarter notes were too busy themselves with the kick drum, so. So that, that can make some sick transitions. Um, and so speaking of transitions, um, what I'm going to do here is add in, well, snare drum pattern. Let's see here.
Okay, awesome. And current track, we're gonna add in, well, ton of randomness. Cool. So the idea behind this is if we have it going, what we can do is press two pads at the same time to sort of act as like a little switch between the two drum channels. So let's check this out in practice. So we can add in little snare breaks wherever we want. And since we added a lot of randomness, it's always gonna be different, right? So let's check this out. Four, one. So see, that one was pretty, pretty minimal, right? And that one was pretty sick. That was pretty sick. Three, four, one. And the idea is you want to have the kick land on that first quarter note. So literally on like the second 16th note, you want to switch those, right? Because you want to get that first kick drum. And then you want to switch it basically right as the measure changes. One. And it does help if you shout out the one on the beat so you can really get your timings down. And so we can do a big switch here. Two, three, four. Like that, and there we go. Lower the level to bring in some hats. Two, three, four, one. the syncopation with that because we added the uh, color to those hats. come in from breaks, you can change a big parameter to give a totally different feel to the sound. So like there, I pitched down the kick drum and now it feels like a totally different song.
Well, anyways, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Um, hope you got some good information out of this. Anyways, peace.